Today our theme is peace. And boy, we could sure use some this year. But really, every year there's somebody who's looking for peace. Even going as far back as the prophets of the Old Testament, there's a desire for peace. In Isaiah's great prophecy of the coming of the Messiah, he says that the Messiah will be the Prince of Peace. He says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning and will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And then you go further on in the Bible. You come up to shortly before Jesus is born, when John the Baptist is born. And his father says that that John is going to pave the way for this Messiah, this Messiah who will shine light on those living in deep darkness and in the shadow of death. And he will bring peace. In Luke chapter 1, we find the story. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the path of peace. And in the next chapter, in in chapter 2, when Jesus is born, the angels come and they announce, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Today, as we look at peace, we look at one of the great carols that speaks of peace. The carol that is known as I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Perhaps uh, no carol speaks quite so poignantly of the peace that Christ brings and our need for it. So as we've been doing each week in Advent, we're going to dig a little deeper into this carol to find out about this peace that Christ brings. Well, it's also a song about bells and And bells are connected with Christmas in many different ways. But you don't hear bells like you used to. The Salvation Army bell ringers, a lot of them have been silenced. And and even if they weren't, you probably did your shopping online this year anyways. So you missed out. Churches don't put in bells either. Oh, there's a few churches that, that have carillons, those electronic bells that play songs instead of somebody ringing a bell on a rope. But even many of those have been silenced by noise ordinances. Did you know that Resurrection Church has an old-fashioned church bell? It's hanging just outside the main entrance. But I've never heard it ring. I don't even know how you make it ring. We don't hear bells much these days. Which is a pity because bells can be so joyous. 
Think of all the carols that talk about bells. There's jingle bells and silver bells and, and carol of the bells. This last week, my, my wife and I, we decided to go for a drive just for something to do and look at the lights. And we pulled up in front of one house and they had lights on everything, flashing and blinking. And there was a sign that said to tune into a certain radio frequency. So we tuned in and they had synced the lights to the Trans-Siberian Orchestra's version of the Carol of the Bells. It was so awesome. I could have stayed there all night. It was so uplifting. Life is good. But what happens when the bells ring and, and life isn't so good? When you're not feeling Christmas hope or joy or peace? Well, that's the story of I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, 1863, in the middle of the Civil War, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow listened to the bells ring that Christmas morning. But what was there to celebrate? The nation was at war. Men were, were killing brothers at a pace that had never been seen in this country. There was so much death and dying. And Longfellow had his own personal grief. Just two years earlier, his beloved wife Fanny had died in a, in a tragic fire when her dress caught on fire. He had been taking a nap and he woke to her screams and he tried to put the flames out with a rug and then with his own body. But she was too badly burned and she died the next day. And Longfellow himself was burned as well. He lived, but he had scars on his face for the rest of his life. And then he was left to raise six children. The oldest, the oldest of his children was Charlie. And Charlie turned 18 in that year, 1863. And unbeknownst to his father, he snuck off on a train and went 400 miles to Washington, D.C. to join the Union Army. He was not there long before he was struck down, not by a bullet, but by typhoid fever. He got terribly sick, and they sent him home, and, and fortunately he recovered. He recovered in time for him to go back to his unit in the fall. He was one of the lucky ones, because for those who died in the Civil War, two of every three soldiers died of disease, not by bullets. Charlie was back with his unit, and it was that December, in fact, the first of December, that his dad got a telegram, and the telegram said that he'd been severely wounded, that a bullet had pierced through both shoulders and nicked the spinal cord of his son, Charlie. Longfellow raced to, to where he was, he had been told that his son might be permanently paralyzed, but when he got there, the news was a little better. He was not paralyzed, but it would take many months for him to recover. And it was just a, a couple weeks later then, that Christmas day, that the bells rang out. And Longfellow, as he heard them, he began to write, he began to write his pain that the bitter sweetness of the bells at the time that, that he was still grieving the loss of his wife, still worried about his son and the rest of the children, and still despairing about our nation because he had seen firsthand the violence that we could inflict on one another with our divided country. But with all that going on in his head, he sat down and he wrote these words. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. 
and thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day, a voice, a chime, a chant sublime, a peace on earth, goodwill to men. But then he writes a, a verse that we don't usually sing when we sing it. Then from each accursed mouth the cannons thundered in the south, and with the sound the carols drowned a peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Have you ever felt like Longfellow at Christmas? Have you ever felt that the last thing you want to hear are cheerful bells? Have you ever felt that there is no peace? in your life, or in the world. I have. And I bet you have too. Comedian Tom Papa has a comedy routine where he always uses that phrase, I have. He visits some place, then he describes a, a ridiculous situation he encounters there, follows it up with a more ridiculous question, and always responds, I have. He visited Nashville the week that they held the NFL draft there, and he was told to expect 200,000 visitors crowding into the city. But he said what he didn't expect was that they would all be drunk and riding scooters. Have you ever watched an entire bachelorette party fly by on scooters, he asks, and had an overwhelming urge to watch them crash into a crowd of Green Bay Packers fans? I have. Well, I feel like 2020 has been one big, long, ridiculous comedy routine, although it's not very funny. 280,000 people dead. That's more dead than all those killed in battle throughout the entire Civil War of both the North and the South combined. And there's been so many more hospitalized. And frontline workers have been driven to despair. Jobs have been lost. Businesses closed. Politics have been awful. There's been, there's been racial injustice and killings and carjackings and, and riots. And, and not to mention the usual amount of illness and, and tragedies and troubles. 2020 has been one cruel joke. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Have you been there? I have. Maybe especially year, this year you feel that way, that there is no peace. But Longfellow wasn't finished. There is one more verse. As the bells of Christmas continued to ring out, he finished. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth. Goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. COVID and, and killings, racism and riots, troubles and trials, they don't have the last word. They don't get to determine whether or not we have peace. Jesus does. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the one who shines light into our darkness as he walks through the shadow of death. 
Jesus is the one who brings peace on earth, goodwill to all of us. Our peace is in Christ, not in the things that are happening in the world. You know, those, those angels, when they spoke peace on earth, goodwill to men, they weren't just talking to, to shepherds. They were talking to all of us. They were talking to a single father, grieving his wife, worried about his son, and wondering how his country could ever come back together again. And it was for, for people in 2020. For those of us who are experiencing the same things, grieving, wondering about our families, wondering about our nation. The angels say, glory to God in the highest peace on earth. Goodwill to men. Or as Longfellow put it, then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth goodwill to men. Just two years after he wrote that, the war had ended. The slaves were freed. Soldiers went home to their families. And the nation began to come back together. Historians say that the Christmas as we know it was actually born out of the chaos, the troubles and the fears of the Civil War. See, as the nation had been fractured, it began to, to come back together again around shared Christmas traditions. And things that might have only been celebrated by one nationality or one small group or another began to be shared by everyone. And Christi Christians began to lift up those things that emphasized what was truly important. Family and friends and peace. It was that very same year of 1863 that, that cartoonist Thomas Nash drew the first pictures of Santa as we picture him. The first pictures of Santa as the bearded, jolly, gift-giving Santa. And in those cartoons, when he drew that Santa Claus, you know, before that, it had been St. Nicholas, usually pictured as kind of a skinny, austere bishop, or maybe Father Christmas, again, kind of a gaunt-looking guy. But Nash, Nash drew him as big and jolly, and in his first cartoons, the gifts that he brings are to those soldiers in their tents as they long for peace. Other familiar celebrations of Christmas were born out of that time, too. Louis Prang learned how to print in color, and he began printing Christmas cards. And soon people were sending Christmas cards to bless one another, to wish one another peace and joy. Even the celebration of Christmas itself didn't become a national holiday until five years after the war, and President Ulysses S. Grant made it a national holiday. And the world had come together, and we continue to come together to celebrate this time of peace, just as we did long ago. Now it becomes part of our nostalgia, and we sing songs like, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, and we, we hardly even think about it. We hardly even think about the pain that it came from. But maybe this year is a good time to remember. A good time to remember that that those bells were ringing not in a time of, of great cheer, of easy living, but in a time of pain and chaos, just like today. And just like today, those bells ring out with the message. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men.